This is the last part of our data analysis series. In this video, we will discuss about group by methods. Then we will learn how to concatenate and merge two or more data frames together. And finally, we will learn about some important and useful operations in order to extract useful information from a data set. And in this video, I am going to give away our Udemy course on computer vision in Python. Link is in the description if you want to look at some preview videos and rest of the giveaway participation detail is given in this video so make sure you watch it till the end. To start working with group by first we will create a dictionary of data in order to create a data frame. This data dictionary will hold three columns. First will be the degree column which will hold the list of degree names. Second will be the list of students and third will be the list of aggregate marks of those students. Then create a data frame by passing the data dictionary. Now as you can see in the data frame we have a degree column holding three different degrees then we have some unique names of students and their corresponding marks. And you can see that there is a redundancy in degree column so we will try to group by these rows together based on the degree column. Now if you check the by degree variable then it will show you that it is a data frame group by object. But if you want to look at this by degree data frame then we have to call some aggregate function on it so we will call mean method on it. As a result you can see a data frame with the degree column and the average marks of corresponding degree. And notice that in this data frame we don't have student column because it contains string data and since we called mean method it is only applicable on numeric data. So pandas automatically ignores non-numeric data. You can also apply some other statistical aggregate function like standard deviation and median. And those who don't know what is standard deviation and median, don't worry, we will cover all these concepts in detail when we will enter into data visualization part of the series. And here the degree column can also be used at the index label of this data frame. So if you want to look at the median marks of any degree, then we just need to call the LOC method and pass the degree inside the square bracket. There are some aggregate functions which you can call to group by a data frame. So if I apply the count method, then it will also return the student column holding the count of students for respective degrees. And if you want to look at all the statistical description of all degree together, then apply describe method on it and as a result it will return you the output representing result of all aggregate function you can apply on the data frame. Now we will learn how we can concatenate two data frames together. For that we need two data frame. And one thing you must note that the dimension of both the data frames should match along the axis you want to concatenate those data frames. We are going to concatenate along axis equals 0 so we will make both the data frames with three columns. Now we are ready with our both the data frames. To concatenate the data frames together call concatenate method and pass the list of data frames you want to concatenate together and by default access is zero so we don't need to write it explicitly. As a result you can see that both the data frame has been concatenated along access zero. But if you try to concatenate these data frames along the column which means access equals one then you will get the output data frame like this. We are getting these none values because in data frame one for column A we don't have any values from index three to five. And similarly for data frame 2 we don't have any value for index 0 to 2. This is the reason why we are getting this none values in our data frame. Now we will learn how to merge data frames together. So we will create two data frames but this time both the data frame will have one common column. And if you are familiar with SQL queries then you might have an idea how we merge two tables based on a common column. But if you are not from the SQL background don't worry we will discuss it here. Now we are ready with our left and right data frame. To merge these two data frames together we will call merge method. This merge method takes couple of argument. First two arguments is our left and right data frame. Then we have this how argument equals inner by default. And don't worry I will tell you what actually we mean by this inner here. And the fourth argument we are going to pass is based on which column we want to merge these data frame. In this case we want it to merge on key column. So as output you can see that both the data frame has been merged together based on the common key column. Now to explain you this how argument let me show you the result if I set how equals outer. It gives you the same result because we merged both the data frame on key column and in this case both the data frame have common keys. So to show you what this inner and outer is actually doing and what does they mean I will change any one key of the second data frame. Now if you merge both the data frames together then it will output only for those rows which have common key because this inner means it performs intersection operation based on column we provide. 
But if you set the how argument to outer, then you will get the rows of all the key because outer means union of two data frames based on the given column. And since our left data frame doesn't have any value at column A, B for key 3, it has filled it with the none values. And similar thing happened for column C, D and key 2. So basically inner means intersection and outer means union of data frames based on the column we provide. Now I will show you the most important and useful operation we need while analyzing a real data set. We still have our data frame df we have created at the beginning of this video. You can see that inside our degree and marks column we have repeated values. And if you want to look at the unique values of a column then we can call unique method on that column of our data frame. It will return a numpy array of unique values of that column. And if you want to see the number of unique values then you can call an unique method on it. And to see how many times each unique value occurs in that column we can use a value count method on it. It will show you the value and the count of that value in that column. Now we will learn how to apply our own custom function on any column of our data frame. So first we will create a very simple function which will take one input and return it by dividing by 10. And we will apply this function on our marks column of the data frame. To apply our own custom function data frame object have method called apply. It takes the custom function as input and apply it on each value of that column. You can also write a lambda expression inside apply method if you don't want to define a function separately. Now we will learn how we can sort a data frame based on a column. To sort a data frame we have sort value method. This method takes the column based on which you want to sort the data frame and by default it will sort in ascending manner. But if you want this to be in descending order then simply pass ascending arguments to false. During the data analysis process you might have to deal with very large data set which have too many columns. So if you want to see all the columns together just call the column attribute on the data frame and it will return you the list of columns. And to look at the index value just call the index attribute. And to know the dimension of the data frame call shape attribute. It will return a tuple containing number of rows and columns the data frame have. We have discussed all the important concepts we need to know before we start analyzing a real data set. In the next video we will combine everything we have learned in the last 4 videos in order to analyze a real data set. We will also learn what are the main things we should look for before we start analyzing a dataset. To participate in the giveaway you have to follow two simple steps. The first step is to subscribe to this channel and hit the bell icon. The second step is to fill your name and email in the google form link given in the description. Total 5 names will be chosen randomly by a python script who will get this course for free. And result will be announced in my next video so hurry up.